church family it's so good to be with you again and to worship i'm so excited for the moment that we all can come together at church and worship god we just been praying that you are hungry for his presence you're hungry for him to walk with you and be with you in every every area of your life amen so let's just worship him thank you god for your presence we're hungry for you jesus Yeah. 
Good evening, Thrive Church. We're so glad that you're joining us this evening. We just want to say that we are praying for you. We know that the times that we're living in right now are just like nothing we've ever seen before with the pandemic and the hurt and the pain that's going on just across this nation. We just want you to know that we love you and we're praying for you and we're praying that you be encouraged tonight um, as we hear the word of God. Amen. Amen. You know, as Jill's saying that, We've never experienced what we're going through. And a couple months ago, just with the virus and the pandemic, that was life-changing and altered all of our lives. And yet here we are being able to meet this way and still be able to hear the Word of God and let God's Word encourage us and help us. But like we always tend to say, um, we're going to be transitioning back where we're able to meet together in person, and we look forward to that. But you would think just facing what we're going through with the pandemic would be just life-altering enough but honestly with all of the the racial tensions and some of the violence some of the things that have happened uh in our country and now even around the world it's truly you know we talk about the end times uh as christians we talk about it but if you really believe god's word about the last days church i, I know that we don't know the hour but we can see the signs we can see the season that we're in and uh, this is what I do know. I know that we're getting closer to the return of Christ. I know as you look around and you see everything that we're facing, that God's word is real. God's word is true. We need, we need Jesus in our nation. We Amen. need Jesus in our world. And it's just becoming more and more clear. And, you know, as the church, we're, we're always very prayerful. And, and what I want you to know is that this last Sunday was Pentecost Sunday. And if you haven't had a chance to hear Pastor Bo's message and his sermon about the role of the Holy Spirit in our lives, you have to go and you have to listen to that message because it is not an accident that 50 days after Easter, you know, we're celebrating when the Holy Spirit was poured out and the indwelling, the baptism of the Holy Spirit enabled the first century church to do what they were called to do in the same Holy Spirit that empowered and enabled them over 2,000 years ago is the same Holy Spirit that's going to help us Amen. during this time. He's going to, like Pastor Bo preached about, I'm not going to preach his whole sermon, but the, the role of the Holy Spirit in our lives will help us get through this time, will help us usher in the second coming of Christ. So we as a church, we don't have to be without hope. We don't have to be filled with fear and anxiety. But our hearts are breaking. And we you would think that the church would never have to say, oh, we don't stand for racism. We don't but but we're gonna say at church that we believe that all people are created in God's image and our heart is breaking. When we think about George Floyd in, in Minnesota, and we think about Ahmaud Aubrey in Georgia and Breonna Taylor in Kentucky and so many recent just instances that are just we want people to know that our hearts are absolutely aching and breaking. We believe there's a God that loves, that loves his children. And he wants the church to, to know what to do during these times. And that's what I want to talk to you a little bit more about is how is it all connected? The pandemic, just celebrating uh, Pentecost Sunday and, and thinking about the role of the Holy Spirit on our lives. All of this division, the violence, the riots the tension that we're facing, it's not an accident. And I'm here to tell you that the that God is sitting on the throne and he is not worried, he's not fretting, he's not uh, uh, rubbing his hands together thinking, what am I going to do? God is always sovereign, he's always in control, he's not out of control. And I know God is going to guide us and lead us, but we have to ask God to help us and getting back to the Holy Spirit, that's how it's going to happen. So just know at Thrive Church, 
we love everybody. We, we do. And we want a heart, a ministry of reconciliation. We want to be part of the answer. We want to be part of the solution. We want to be able to have God use Thrive Church in our community and even around the world. We want it to be a place where God can, can just pour himself out in us and through us to reach the hurting. So if you're watching this and you're upset, you're troubled, you're full of rage, you're full of anger, you're not sure how to feel or what to think. You know what? We're not here to give our opinions as pastors or as people. What we're here to do is to preach the word of God and to encourage God's people. So I want to share a little bit from God's word. But if, if, if you're feeling a mixture of emotions from the pandemic to the riots and the, the racial injustices that are happening and the violence and all the, all the things that are going on and you're watching the news and you just don't know what to think, say, or do, you're not sure how to feel, I just want to encourage you today. In fact, I'm going to put a truth up right now. And I want you, if you're taking notes, just to write this down. Uh, look at this because it's powerful. I believe God's going to help us. Christians don't need to react to what's going on in the world. We need to be led by God. Amen. I'm going to say that again, church. Christians don't need to react to what's going on in the world. We need to be led by God. So what are we saying in that statement is it is natural for us to see what's going on and then to leap into action or just begin to type words on social media or just begin to, to speak out. But the truth is we were never called to react to what's happening in the world. We were never to look around and just react to that. God wants us to be led by him. I believe that with all of my heart. And that takes discipline. That's hard to do. It's hard to seek God in troubled times. What we want to do is we want to worry. We want to get upset. We want to react. And, and I'm not saying that we need to be silent. I'm not saying that we need to, to be inactive. We don't need to do anything. But if we're Christians that respond to what's happening in the world and all we do is react by what's going on around us, we're cutting out the most important part of the equation, which is God himself, yes. his leadership in our lives. One thing I admire about Pastor Bo and serving underneath Pastor Bo for 23 years Anytime there's been something that's been difficult, that's happened, uh, a circumstance, a situation, a crisis, I've always watched Pastor Bo and Teresa, they're not quick to act or to speak, but they always go to God. And as our pastors, I've watched that throughout the years to just say, you know what? We're so quick to react, but as Christians, we need to be led by God. It's one of the hardest things to do. So don't mistake just, just taking time and patience and saying, you know what, God, I don't want to just react in my flesh. I don't want to just, you know, just fly off the handle, say something, do something, think something. I, I really need to go to you, God. And I believe that's why God sometimes allows chaos to, to kind of erupt around us is because we take our eyes off and we're not connected to him. And in these moments, we have a choice. We can react to what's happening around us or we can go directly to him and say, God, what would you have me to do? And that's, I, I promise you that this is good sound preaching. This is what God wants you to hear is we've been reacting probably a little bit too much. I've been guilty of it. I know I can speak for, for probably all of us that it's normal, it's natural to just react, to react in righteous anger, to react in and, 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 and feel like we're being godly, we're being righteous, we're on behalf of justice, we're trying to, we're trying to do things. I hear it and I see it every day, especially with the riots and everything going on. But trust me, God wants us to seek him, not to just react and fly off the handle, but just don't react about what's going on around us, to go to him and to be led by him. And that's, you know, if you don't do that as a Christian, if you don't let God, if you don't allow him to lead you, if you don't allow the work of the Holy Spirit to just begin to guide you during these times, you're like a dog chasing your tail. You're just running around and, and, and it's not effective. You're not listening to God. No one's listening to you. You're not making an impact. You're not making a difference. And uh, it, when we cut out God of the equation and we just begin to fly off the handle and react, we're missing the heart of God. God can't use us when we don't include him. That's a powerful thought. So we've already said, you know, that, that we, we don't need to react to what's happening. We need to be led by God. But I want to give you... Just one more truth right now. I believe it's going to help you. Write this down if you're taking notes. Every thought, every word, and every action needs to be bathed in prayer and sanctioned by the Holy Spirit. Again, I'm going to say it again for repetition's sake. Every thought, every word, every action needs to be bathed in prayer and sanctioned by the Holy Spirit. So what are we saying? 
before you say something, before you do something, before you even think something, we need to, we need to be people of prayer and we need to be people who, who God tells us, this is what I want you to do. The whole, that's the role of the Holy Spirit as our helper, our counselor, the paraclete, the one that comes alongside of us and dwells in, in us and helps us know what to do, say, think, act. We need to have the Holy Spirit working in our lives. Again, it's no accident. We just celebrated Pentecost Sunday this last Sunday. And now here we are in the midst of like chaos in our nation and around the world. God is saying, what better time to, to, to not react to what's going on around you, but to say, all right, Holy Spirit, I need you to guide me. Instead of just grabbing my phone and responding to what my family's saying, my neighbor's saying, my coworkers are speaking out around the water cooler at work or wherever we are, just flying off the handle, speaking off the top of our head, thinking we're doing the right thing. But in truth, if we're not bathing it in prayer, if it's not sanctioned by the Holy Spirit, we shouldn't say it. We shouldn't do it. We shouldn't even think it. Do you believe the Holy Spirit will help us if we ask him to guide us, if we give him that place in our life? I, I'm telling you, I believe God can use the church. We believe that this is the church's finest hour. But there's a lot of Christians that are like a bull in a china shop. We're just running around and we're, we're saying things and doing things. And I don't know if everything we're saying and doing has been sanctioned by the Holy Spirit. I know in my life it's not. Just reacting a whole lot to what's going around. So church, I hope this is speaking to your heart today. I hope you guys are, are just getting, you know, just, just something in, in that, that can help you. And that's what I just want to share just as I know we're in the middle of the sermon series, Stories from the Storm, but if the Holy Spirit is not guiding us, if we're not going and saying, God, we need you, Holy Spirit, we need you to help us what to think, what to say, what to do, then we are missing. Church, listen, we're missing the heart of God. And you know, I just want to quickly share just, and they're going to put this up, three practical things you can do during this time. Three practical things you can do during this time. And what am I talking about this time? The epidemic. Um, um, trying to, to, to be closer, to build people up, trying to overcome the division and the lack of unity, the hatred, uh, all of these things we're going through. If we go to God's word, there's three things that I can give you very quickly, and I believe it'll bless your heart. Because I don't have all the answers. We don't have all the answers. The church, you know, we're just God's people trying to serve God, doing the best we can. But God's word has all of the answers. So I'm going to give you a couple points from God's word that I know if we do these, God will bless it, church. The first thing is this. Write this down. Be a peacemaker. Be a peacemaker. We know God's word. And I want to read Matthew 5, verse 9. I want to read it from the Amplified we're familiar with the scripture. It says this, <coughs> excuse me, blessed, spiritually calm with life joy in God's favor are the makers and maintainers of peace for they will express his character and be called the sons of God. Isn't that powerful church? If that's not you, if you're not spiritually calm, if you don't have that life joy working inside of you, if you if, if you don't have the favor of God in your life, we can have that, that God wants us to be a peacemaker. And as we do that, you know, we're going to be peacemakers and peace maintainers of his peace. And people are going to see that, that the Holy Spirit is working and inactive in our lives. The first step, according to his word, is that we need to be a peacemaker during these times of uncertainty and fear, hatred, division. Let's commit in our hearts to be a peacemaker. The second thing that we can do is this, church family. Write this down. Break down walls of hostility. Come on, write it down, church. Break down walls of hostility. I love this scripture. It talks about what Jesus did for us because at one time we were enemies of God. We weren't on good terms with God. There was a division. There was, we weren't right. We weren't righteous. And, and until he died on the cross for us, we were at odds with our creator. And the scripture says this in Ephesians 2, 14, it says, for he himself, talking about Jesus, he himself is our peace who has made us both one and has broken down in his flesh the dividing wall of hostility, the dividing wall of hostility. And if Jesus could do that between us, his creation, and say, you know what? I've, I've, my love allowed me to, to die on the cross so that we can be made right. We can be made uh, uh, you know, righteous in God's eyes. God gives us the same power, I believe that, church, to break down walls of hostility. 
and whatever's separating us, you know, we have to be determined to, to live that sacrificial life and to have the love that God has for us and in us. The way Jesus loved us and gave himself for us, we've got to just, we can't be selfish. We can't just, just continue to disagree with others. There's a lot of fighting. There's a lot of arguing. There's just, there's a lot of yelling. You know what I hear, church? A lot of clanging cymbals. And I don't hear and see a lot of God's love. And we're missing it, church. But you know what? God is helping us to break down the walls of hostility. If he did it in our relationship, he's saying that he can do it in us with others, that we can help break down the walls of hostility. And the third and final point I want to give you, it's so powerful. I love this one. It might be my favorite, is to build up others in God's love. Come on, write it down. Build up others in God's love. Romans 14 verse 19 says this, So then let us pursue what makes for peace, and for mutual upbuilding. That's what we need to be pursuing right now. We need to just, with everything in our power, we need to just do everything we can to pursue peace and, and mutual upbuilding. And, and you might feel that people aren't, aren't building you up. They're, they're, the world is, is, is tearing itself down and dismantling itself right in front of our eyes. You know, God has called us as peacemakers and people who tear down walls of hostility. He's called us to build others up in his love. And I just believe that that's what we need to be pursuing. And we need to be thinking, what can I do to help uh, build others up? What can I say? What can I do? How can I love? How can I serve? What can I do to build others up? And I have one more scripture for you tonight. And it's, it's I love this one. It's so powerful. It's Romans 12 verse 10. Romans 12 verse 10 says this. Love one another with brotherly affection. And here's my favorite part. Outdo one another in showing honor. Outdo one another in showing honor. And I really believe, church, that if we commit to being peacemakers, if we commit to, to tearing down, to break down those walls of hostility, and we commit to building others up in God's love, you can. that's a, that's a huge assignment right there. You can focus on that during the season, during this time, whether it's the riots and, and all the, the incidents that are happening across our nation, around the world, or it's even, you know, people are upset because we're still going through this, this pandemic and all the effects of that, the economy, um, people are out of work, people are just uh, a lot going on. God, no matter what we're facing, he wants us to be peacemakers. He wants us to tear down those walls of his uh, hostility. And he wants us to build others up in his love, church. So let that speak to your heart tonight. I, I hope I, we can't fix all the problems in a couple quick minutes. But what we can do is share God's word with you. And if God's word works, if you put it into action in your life, I promise you the Holy Spirit will tell us what to do, what to say, and even what to think. If we call on him and say, we're not going to react to what's going on around us. We're going to be led by God. And I love this, this thought. You know what? We, just write this last thought down because it's powerful, church. We need to be filled with the Spirit so we can be led by the Spirit. One more time. We need to be filled with the Spirit so that we can be led by the Spirit. Church, if we do that, God's going to, this will be the finest hour. God will use Thrive Church and his bride across the face of the earth. He'll use us. This could be our finest hour. So church, we're so excited to just, to see God just move in us and to see the Holy Spirit just begin to do a work. And he's doing it already. Let's just ask him to increase in our life. And let's be a blessing to our neighbors, to our community, to the world we live in. Thank you so much, church. You're going to be blessed uh, tonight. So make sure you get your Bible and get ready to receive all that God has in store for us. Amen. Hello, church family. Thank you for joining us tonight. We have an incredible couple here with us that we want you to meet. They are part of many ministries in our church, and we absolutely adore them and love them and love their kids. Um, so will you just introduce yourselves to our church family, please? Hi, church family. Uh, my name is David Hansen. And I'm Tiffany Hansen. Thank you guys so much for being here and being part of this. Church, we know that some of you guys know David and Tiffany and their kids, and some of you might not know. I mean, we're a pretty good-sized church, and uh, if you haven't had a chance to meet this incredible family, 
They're absolutely amazing. And Jill and I, we, we've gotten pretty close to them throughout the years and our kids are close with one another and they're part of our, our programs that we do after school and they've just been such a blessing to Thrive Church. But if you don't know about their story, I'm excited because every every group that we brought here, every individual, every couple, Jill and I have learned uh, every time we've done this so much about people that we already know. So if you don't know them at all, you're gonna be blessed. And uh, if you do know them, um, you're, you're going to find out some stuff about their story that's just powerful and it's awesome. And what I'd like to ask you guys is how, here's the big question, how did you guys come to the Lord? Uh, how did you accept Jesus? How did you start your journey of faith? And it can start with either one of you. Well, I grew up in the church, so I've kind of always followed the Lord, um, but So, like, just going to church with your family, and, and did you, from a young age, just uh, always just have God and, and the Bible and Sunday school and some of the stories just part of your life? Like, from, because that's, that's, that used to be a lot of people's stories, and that's not so much common anymore. Yeah, I was coming on Sundays every Sunday with my grandma since I was as little as I can remember. Wow, that's awesome. What about you, David? How did you come to the Lord? Well... Um, it's uh, um, kind of a rough story. I mean, I it spent I spent years. I didn't I didn't grow up in the church. Yeah. I, I wasn't. Uh, we we didn't go to church ever. I didn't hang out around anybody who went sure. to church. So when I met her, I was just like, yeah, go ahead, do your thing, you know. And she was like, well, I I really like you to come with me. I'm like, yeah, maybe one day I will. You know, so I spent I spent years and years just kind of trying to duck and dodge, and, and uh, you know, when I did go, it, it was more to just okay. Well, if I go this time, yeah. she won't ask me so much. And even when we got married, I, it was kind of all for her. You know, sure. go get married in the church, go to do everything from A to Z and on the list. And um, it wasn't up until maybe a few years ago where. Uh, I just realized how far downhill I was going. Wow. And the more we started to come, um, especially to thrive, the more it clicked for me. It was almost like I found people there that I could relate to and that uh, I could open up and listen to and, and hear that word. And um, I just got to a point where I was going downhill fast mm -hmm. and just realized everything I was trying to do on my own just wasn't working like I couldn't hold everything together on my own even though you know as a man I'm sitting here like I've got this I can do this no I don't need anybody else I can do this and I was losing everything and um, yeah, once we did come to thrive and everything just started to click I, I just said you know what I, I gotta try something different and uh, it was at that point you know about a year after we found thrive we joined paradigm and and uh, baptized uh, for me being the first time so the first so. time and and just uh when people like come to a church and i wasn't raised in church at all so i look at tiffany and you're like uh, i was raised in church and uh i'm not sure your whole church experience but to see people worship and at our church you know we're, we're we believe in the holy spirit and um, God moves in different ways and sometimes people fall out under the power of God or we pray for people We see different things. I always think of it as a, I don't want to say an outsider But somebody who has no background in it and I'm very sensitive to that and uh, I, I always believe that the Holy Spirit for people who they're not used to that I believe it's the Holy Spirit that helps draw people when they don't understand something or something's foreign to them and they look at it and we're up there saying, lift your hands or shout to the Lord or uh, where everyone's hugging each other and things like that. I know it can be a little overwhelming um, for people who are not used to that. And um, again, Tiffany, I don't know your, your church background and, and if that was just like normal for her, but for you, but for, for David to think like, uh, man, what, and I think of Pastor Bo, I love Pastor Bo. And even myself, we can be crazy uh, up there, you know, on the, we're we just we we just live life to the fullest, and we we uh, we try to be passionate for the things of God. But I guess what I'm getting at is, and, and I'll ask both of you, what was your impression of, especially David, like for someone who wasn't 
raised in church, I'm sure you felt the presence of God, but were there some hurdles that you had to overcome to be like, I'm not used to this? <laughs> oh, definitely, definitely. Yeah. I mean, even when I came um, to the realization that in order um, for me to kind of get out of the, the lifestyle and mindset that I was in, you know, I had to submit and I had yeah. to give my life over. And even after doing that, um, you know, I wish it was one of those stories where I'm like, you know, I'm in the paradigm. I went, I got saved, and it's just been amazing ever since. Right. Now, don't get me wrong, it has. Yeah. But I struggled. I struggled for a solid year, year and a half after, maybe even two, um, just to kind of get the the new direction that I was going in right. Yeah. And um, it, it's it's been a, a crazy but an amazing journey. And you know, I think God put me in certain places um so i could be around like-minded people to kind of yeah. help me get that direction and uh it's, it's how many years has it been uh, not exactly but approximately because i want you guys to both talk about some of the ministries at thrive church and then outside of thrive church that uh um you guys are a part of but approximately how long have you guys been coming to thrive approximately started Easter, believe it or not, Easter Another Sunday. Easter story, that's <laughs> powerful. Um, in 2016, so it's oh, been wow. four years. Okay. And um, we did Paradigm, yeah. and we became a part of the church, and we were eager to get involved in the ministries that you guys had going on. And, I mean, I've been with the nursery for a few years now, and getting into the food bank. and You guys have helped so run our... Our softball yeah, team. Yeah, started out the softball team. Mm -hmm. We've got it up and going again. And Which is like incredible for fellowship. It's one yeah. of our life groups, our Thrive groups, where people come together. We have Thrive groups where we pray, we study the Bible, we study Christian books. Um, mm -hmm. But we also have groups where people get together, and that's you guys have been so influential. Um, first time in the history of our church where we had one team, and we had to have two teams because um, the amount of people who were interested, because you guys took it from where it was to just a, a level where more people were getting interested in that. And that was that's just one of the many areas in our church where you guys have been connected. I'm, I'm also excited to hear a little bit about something that's happened to both of you guys, a powerful ministry you guys are involved in. You guys talk a little bit about what God's doing inside the church, but also outside of our church. I, I did kind of spill the beans before we, we <laughs> sat down here. I was just so excited. Um, but when I was saying that God put me around like-minded people to kind of get, guide me and, and um, help build me up and, and kind of give me a direction, he, he introduced, um, and it's crazy how I came about it because I, I wasn't really looking. Uh, I just kind of, we went, we got invited from or to a barbecue by a couple of friends and I walked in, I saw them there and I was like, hey, you know, I got to go talk to them. And I missed so many opportunities to go do it that I ended up uh, regretting it a week later and get finding one of them on Facebook just to get some idea. Now tell everybody so, who this group uh, is. Yeah, It's, it's a, a motorcycle ministry called uh, Christian Riders in Faith. Yeah. And I, I do, I believe that, uh, you know, God put me there for a reason. And it is it has been probably uh, one of the most amazing journeys I've had. And you guys have your, an incredible yeah. ministry outside of the church. But this is what we love about the kingdom of God is uh, through uh, you and Mike and some others who are part of this incredible ministry. You guys have brought that ministry alongside of us for tons of our outreaches. One of the most recent ones is we just had, we celebrated some of our seniors who are graduating high school. And uh, I've never seen this before, but their, their motorcycle ministry um, joined us as we were going from house to house. And it was almost like a funeral procession because they would go ahead of us and stop the lights and all of the traffic so that we could stay together going all over uh, the city. And I was just like, praise God for these big burly guys who uh, everyone's listening to because they're not listening to me and my, uh, my, my Ford Escape. You know, I'm just driving <laughs> along and you guys are doing such a great job. But I, I love your guys' heart for outreach and for ministry. Tell, um, tell our church family some of the things that that ministry does because it's powerful. It's awesome. So God's really grown it. Um, especially within, you know, this past year and with everything going on right now, it's just been, I mean, we, we had no idea. We thought, man, well, we can't even get together. Um, how, you know, how sure. are we going to be used to keep moving? And, um, you know, there, there'd be quite a different functions that, uh, you know, a lot of other, uh, 
ministries would host and we would go side by side with them and, and pray over uh, um, parks and people and, and serve out food and, and uh, lately he's really been focusing on um, our, our own shop where we've held probably the largest Bible study we've had in since I've been there for the two years I've been there and um, it's all during this pandemic wow. and it's 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 all you know we're, we're taking all of our precautions of course and sure. live streaming everything sure. um, but it's outreached is what I'm trying to say is um, sure. more people than than we have before and probably more than than we could imagine um, you need to find these guys on Facebook and, and follow them because they're constantly giving out food and clothes and helping like with relief efforts and just, but it's not just that. They're studying God's word. You're doing discipleship. Uh, talk a little bit more about so, all of that. Yeah. Um, Monday nights, we do a men's study. Uh, Tuesday, the men's study is at 630 um, right there on the corner of Colfax and Knox. I mean, you can't wow. miss it. Um, Tuesdays. This is something new that's kind of been developing, but it's it's been amazing. Tuesdays, um, we do a, a food drive, like a food bank. And um, at first, when when it started to come to the table, we were struggling with the, the okay, well, if, you know, where are we going to store this yeah. stuff? You know, and this there's is a lot of logistics. God's really just provided everything. Everything He brings in, it looks like it's a ton, but we get rid of it all every every week. And um, you know a little bit more about the time framing. Is it there out in, uh, uh, by Colfax, yeah, in that so, area? Yeah, mm -hmm. we actually Which is one of the neediest areas in our city. Yeah, we give it out um, at the shop at 11 o'clock every Tuesday and Thursday. Um, and then Wednesday nights we have our Bible study at 6.30. Um, and then during the week we were giving out lunches to the kids in Green Valley Ranch. Saturdays we have, every second Saturday of the month, we have a breakfast Bible study. You guys need to get busy. I'm just kidding. <laughs> you guys are doing this because not only what you do at Thrive, but you guys have, you really have a kingdom mentality because we know that our church is part of the greater church as a whole. You know, we love people who are doing things for God and um, we love partnering with ministries and just um, there's so many incredible things that are happening that uh, it's it's not very healthy to think, oh, you know, this is the only thing going on. We celebrate. Um, we're all working together just to reach the lost. And you guys are very much part of Thrive. I mean, you're the heartbeat of Thrive. But at the same time, you serve in our church. You serve in our community. You really do. And you bring this ministry to Thrive. And you guys have done countless events with us, um, car shows, I could, I could just name so many things that, that this ministry has been come along our side and you guys are just, it's a powerful, powerful, uh, testimony. Did something recent happen, uh, to you guys that you guys want to talk about? Cause yeah. I think it's pretty awesome. Something to celebrate. It is. Um, I actually became an official member yesterday. An official member yesterday yeah. to this ministry. And it's not easy. They don't just look at people. You have to go through as many people know about this culture and this world it's very um, there's there's very strict requirements and 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 uh, I don't I've studied it I've never really been part of it but they take it seriously and it's how long have you guys been part before you became a, a full fledged member of this ministry how long were you around it being involved with it so I was in what what we call uh, the discipleship yeah. uh, part you go through like a discipleship period um, and that lasted I mean it could go nine months to a year. Yeah. Before. Studying God's word and doing the schedule and just serving and all of that. And just to, just to, I mean, connect with everybody that you're going to be serving with. And yeah. then, you know, and kind of showing where you are in your walk. Wow. Um, it's not, it's not as, as strict and as, uh, how, how would you describe it? It's not as strict as um, what you would see in like a club. Because it can be very in the in the worldly culture of this whole thing. It if they don't misunderstand, this is a ministry versus some of the clubs that you see out there. And David has told me as well as Mike and some of the other guys that you work alongside. Maybe even talk about that a little bit. How you work alongside the worldly components 
and and some of the guidelines you've told me about your ministry of like we're always going to pray and we're always going to represent Christ in these situations. Talk about how you do rub shoulders with that part of our society. It, it's actually a blessing, and I won't I won't go into detail about sure. who you know sure. and all that, but uh, we do we we get to come side by side and and uh, do events with um, some of the bigger clubs. And what's been amazing is, you know, even at um, one of our biggest outreaches um, called Save Our City, it usually takes place in July. Um, there's been times where the, the, the guys have been going through something and they've come over and asked for prayer. These guys would never go to a church service, you know, but there's a Christian motorcycle ministry that's where they are. And you guys are like chaplains and like just and you guys are like missionaries to that part of, of culture of people who probably and I've heard it before people would even come into our church as loving as we are as accepting and that, that you guys are bringing Christ the light of God into that that dark place I think it's incredible it's it's definitely been amazing I mean and you know I don't I don't know how many um, MCs do or don't go to church but sure. it, it, you know from what you would see um, around is you generally just don't don't see it often yeah. and, and you know don't get me wrong you know sometimes you, you will go up to somebody and, and this is just in general and say hey can we pray for you and they're like no yeah i'm good yeah and we respect that sure. and we'll we'll walk away and you know pray for them in the background sure and um but it's been amazing for for the few that have come up and and say hey, you know we just lost a brother or wow. um or we've got a big ride coming up will you guys come pray over us and wow. it's just it's amazing to uh to, to see everyone kind of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, like co-live. Yeah. yeah. Just kind of work together. And, and you know, there's several um, motorcycle ministries that are out there, but it's kind of still a new area of ministry where um, there's a great need there. And uh, you guys are, God is using you. I, I completely, not just in the, the people in that world, but the people you're reaching through all of the various ministries that we've talked about. And it's so powerful we want to congratulate you tiffany because david became a member and then tiffany's like i'm not sure about this whole thing and then just has fallen in love with the ministry and the vision the heart behind it so congratulations Thank on that you. i think that's awesome if i can just real quick yeah. just just brag on her a little bit i'm so proud of her because um like i said you know my discipleship program was about a year you know, before um i got my full back patch and and the nameplate came a few months um before and and um that there was an opportunity probably within that year of me getting um my full patch for her to get hers as well and she was um strong enough to step back and say you know what um i'm not ready wow. and she wanted to know that uh you know she wasn't just uh, coming in as yeah. as my wife but uh, coming in as um you know this is god given sure so I was so proud of her, and they kept it from me. That's the big thing. They kept it from me the whole time. Apparently, this has been going on for weeks. And uh, just yesterday, we were, we were at the shop and, and getting ready to go through like a quick study and and um, a few things. And they're just Tiffany, stand up. And then they started pulling out all these patches out of a backpack, and I'm like, what is going wow. on? Like, what do you? And I'm looking at her like, how did you know and not yeah. tell me? You know. But uh, what a it was beautiful a thing to surprise. see a husband and wife. Um, you guys do such a tremendous job with your kids and you work full-time jobs like like the rest of us and this is something that you guys do together and, and it was a journey it's still going to be a journey for you guys but i see god all in it i think that's absolutely incredible and we're so blessed to have you guys be part of thrive church but we want some, we wanted to celebrate you know um this 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 ministry that you guys are part of because it's just so incredible and uh we want you guys to stay tuned because uh we have one more part where we're really gonna get into god's word and how and just what god's been speaking to our friends about during this time so make sure you get a bible something to write with and and stay with us in jesus name amen So David and Tiffany, we've heard how you accepted Christ into your life and then how you came to Thrive Church. But what we're wondering is what God has been speaking to you during the storm 
with everything that's going on right now in the world, with the pandemic, everything, the brokenness that's happening, what what is God speaking to you guys? Well, the biggest thing is to trust in Him. Um, me being in the emergency department on the front lines, it's was very difficult at first because um, we didn't know really what was going on. And, you know, like to admit I was a little worried, you know, bringing it home to my kids or getting sick and bringing it home to David. And, you know, we're essential workers, so we're both out there working no matter what, uh, which was a blessing in itself, but it still was very scary for, for us. Um, and, yeah, it was just reading the Bible and just trusting in his word that he was going to get us through everything no matter what happened. That's powerful. That's powerful. So trust in the Lord. That's that's what that's one of the first things, and God continually spoke to you about just trusting in Him during that time. What about you, David? What's God's been speaking to you during the storm? I I really have to agree um, with what Tiffany said. It's it's really been about building trust, and I think especially for me, and that's where it's He's doing most of His work with and in me right now is with trust because uh, I came from a long background of worrying, worrying, stressing if it's something tomorrow or next week or something even out of my control. I was like, no, I need to worry about it so I can come up with a plan to fix it. And, um, you know, he just keeps keeps giving it to me, you know, to trust me, trust me, trust me. And then uh, it's really helped me now without or with not getting kind of sucked into the media. You know, I'll watch it every day. You'll see it. It's all over the place. It's kind of uh, inevitable that you're going to run into it and then uh, I'll, I'll catch myself starting to get back into all the theories and what's going on in the world and, and this it's hard thing, not to yeah. yeah so you know and then I'll, I'll jump right back into the bible and, and just remember okay well this is his plan his timing is perfect he knows what he's doing it's out of my control the only thing I can do is trust in him and uh, let him worry about tomorrow or next week or even just focus on today and what I'm supposed to do today. That's powerful. Um, there's a, um, a scripture that really, really um, speaks loud to me, and it's uh, Luke 12, 25. It says, who by worrying can add a single hour to your life? And it's just, it's it's like you gain nothing. You gain nothing by worrying about something that's completely out of your control when God knows what he's doing. You know, that's his job is to worry about tomorrow, and we just got to let go and give it back to so when you talk about coming from a background of worry, I guarantee probably more people than not struggle with worry and anxiety. And I would point to my wife and say, oh, she's the one. But the truth is, in my own way, um, it's the same exact thing. And, and you had said something to me um, as we were talking about this, about roles and jobs. And, and it's like when we worry, talk to me again about like a whose job is what you know it's like when you when we worry it's it's like we're trying to do God's job or his role and it's we're, we're never going to be able to do what God does you know talk a little bit more about how you overcame how, how God used this storm to help teach you like who can add one one hour to the life you know talk just a little bit more about how you've um some of the things that you do you mentioned how you go to the word instead of the media is there anything else you do to really uh, when you notice that you're starting to worry kind of help our people a little bit more because i know people struggle with it so it's been it's been amazing to have the the support system i have through you know the ministry i'm, I'm with and, and through my wife and family i mean she's been a tremendous uh, line of support for me as well uh, because she's the one i mainly been to you know so when i catch myself Hey, check this out like this is insane she she kind of gives me that, yeah she gives me that reminder like you need to pray on it and then she'll even sometimes go as far when you know because sometimes I, i'm hard to let go so i'm like oh well yeah yeah i will but let me just finish yeah. telling you this how crazy it is and she's like no so um she'll even take the initiative to to send me a scripture and just hey, read this that's you know? powerful um so it's just a reminder of uh you know reaching out to to fellow family member or fellow uh, sure. uh, Christian brother or sister to to uh, be there for support and if, if that's not available um, and as cliche as it sounds it's it's very true and useful open your Bible and just start reading it almost doesn't matter where you start I found you can just open it up and God will speak to you through true. these um, scriptures that's powerful yeah sure too yeah I mean the biggest thing for me is um, I try 
not to worry about things. Um, so I kind of throw myself into doing things. Um, so I really became a part of the, pan the food pantry that we have, um, giving away the food boxes at the food bank. And I figured the biggest thing that I could do was just continue to give back. Um, because they still need help. Everyone still needs help, especially during this time. But um, it really, God spoke to me that I need to do his work. Whether mm -hmm. it's in the hospital, continuing to help people, whether I'm afraid or not, um, or on the streets, still continue to feed them. They still need to eat. Um, so a, bit, a scripture that stuck out to me was um, Acts 20, 35. It says, and I have been a constant example of how you can help those in need by working hard. You should remember the words of the Lord Jesus. It is more blessed to give than to receive. That's so powerful. So good. So if you're listening to this and you're and you're saying, you know what, I struggle with worry. And I'm, I don't know about you guys. I can't speak for you guys, but I think of 9-11. I think of a few other things in our lifetime that were really big. And if it was just the, the, the pandemic, if that was all we were dealing with in 2020, that would be like one of the biggest things in our lifetime that I can remember. And now with the civil unrest and some of the other things that were that we're dealing with and potentially the economy and everything else like that. We are in like historically unique times, honestly, we really are. And when I listen to both of you and I hear you, David, talk about you can choose to um, what you put into you, you know, if it's the media, if it's just people, you know, their thoughts on things, opinion and all that kind of stuff, it can just overwhelm your heart. And you said, I go to the word, I go to the word. And when I'm not going to the word, people close to me are telling me, Here's some of the word. Here's the scripture. You said something that really blessed me, Tiff, when you talked about how um, when we're worried about ourselves, one of the best things we could do is serve yes. others because there's always a need going on. And that blessed me so much because people are out there and you're thinking about, and it's not wrong. It's very normal and natural. You're thinking about your home, your finances, your job, your kids, all of these things, your everything that you're dealing with. And just listening to our friends today, Man, if you just go out and serve one person as best you can. I know people who can't even come to the church and help with the lunches, but they've donated money. They've gone to the store. They've sent loved ones. They've um, mailed things in. To, I mean, they've, they've used our text giving app to just be a blessing. But I know this, that the enemy, he doesn't want us to serve others. He doesn't want us to get into the word. He really doesn't. And that's what we have to do during this time, church. We absolutely we have to get into his word. We have to look at others. Even though it seems like we're in the end times and it seems like all this craziness is happening, he doesn't want us to just stay in our homes. I understand quarantine is, is, is important to protect ourselves and we're following all those guidelines, but not the mentality of just shutting ourselves in and uh, like, oh, there's a storm outside. We don't know what to do. You're like, I'm on the front lines of the medical field. And I'm also involved with ministries outside of Thrive, ministries inside of Thrive. And I, I have to say, don't want to speak for you guys, but I have to say that that's what helps us overcome worry. Mm -hmm. It's putting our, in one word, come on, say it with me, church, trust. Mm -hmm. You have to trust in the yes. Lord. And you have to just put your full trust in the Lord. And that's, that's kind of what we want to do in every service is to help people, point people towards the person that you can trust. I love our country. Church, listen to me. I love our I love our nation. We're so blessed. And and I know it's a controversial thing to say, you know, to whether we're talking about patriotism or anything else, but we're so blessed. I love our nation. I love our state. I love I, I, I love like you love the things that we're talking about. But the truth is I, you can't put your trust in those things. You really can't. We pray for our president. We pray for our elected officials on the in the national level, the, the local level. But truthfully, church, the only person, if you're hearing me, that you can put your trust in is the Lord Jesus Christ. All other all other ground is sinking sand. There's no person that you can put your trust in. Um, there's no government. There's no system. There's no program. There's nothing you can put your trust in, and and that's what we. That's why we do everything we do. Whether it's the food pantry, the ministries we do, the after school programs we do. Every service is designed to come to a point where we come to that truth, and we tell people, put your trust in Jesus. You need to put your trust in Jesus. No one can force you. 
No one can make you do it. But if you're living a life of worry, of fear, and anxiety, that scripture says it so clearly. You can't add one hour of your life to your life by doing that. It's impossible. So we want to give you the opportunity right now. We just want to ask if you're out there. And I know many of you guys have done this. Many of you have put your trust in Jesus, not just one time in a prayer of salvation, but you put your trust in him daily. You do. But if you're out there and you're saying, I feel overwhelmed, I feel full of fear and anxiety, fear of the unknown, fear of tomorrow, and I want that to change. And I'm hearing the gospel message and I want to put my my trust in Jesus. How do I do it? It's as simple as asking, confessing your sins and asking him. And if you want to do that and um, you're out there, you're listening to this during the broadcast or maybe some other time and you say, you know, I want to do that. Is it really as easy as you're saying it is? It's so simple. There's a lot of things in the Bible that are kind of difficult to understand, but when it comes to God's love, his grace and salvation, that's so simple. It's so easy. There's a Savior who died for me. He died for you. His name is Jesus Christ. He gave his life on the cross. He was buried, and he rose again on the third day. We just celebrated Easter. And through his, 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 his life, his death, his burial, his resurrection, we can have eternal life because of his love for us and that sacrifice. All you have to do is the Bible says anyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And if you want to pray a prayer right now, you just have to say just what David and Tiff were saying. I, I can't do it. I'm not, I'm, I'm not able to do this. And I put my trust in you. If, you. if you pray this prayer, the Bible says that he's going to hear your prayer and he's going to receive you and he's going to forgive you and he's going to give you eternal life. So if you would like to do that right now, I just want you to repeat this prayer after me at this time. So if we could just pray this prayer, and if you're out there, maybe you've prayed this prayer before, but you you just want to pray it again, or maybe you've never prayed it before, now is your time to put your trust, not in anything else, anyone else, but to put it in Jesus Christ. Repeat this prayer after me as we, we pray together. Simply say, Heavenly Father, I come to you in Jesus' name. Jesus, I need you. I'm lost without you. I believe you died for me so that I can have eternal life. Thank you, Jesus, for taking my place on the cross. I ask you to forgive me. I ask you to be my Lord and my Savior. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me, for forgiving me, and for setting me free. All that I have and all that I am belongs to you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And that is the prayer of faith. And if you prayed that prayer and you meant it, the Bible says that you, your name is now written in the Lamb's book of life. And all of heaven is rejoicing over your decision to take your trust and to put it into Jesus Christ. He's the rock. He's the firm foundation that the Word of God speaks about. Doesn't mean we're not going to have problems and go through storms. Doesn't mean our, our life becomes easy. We still face the difficult things that we go through. But it means that you have a Savior now that is, is with you every step of the way. His word says he'll never leave you or forsake you. So if you prayed that prayer, what we want you to do is maybe private message us on Facebook. Or you can call uh, our office even, 303-428-9535. Why do we do that? Is because we want to know who's prayed that prayer. We have a book that's simply called Now What? And it helps new believers learn how to pray and read the word of God and just become a disciple of Jesus. And we also want to know that, that people are praying that prayer, making that decision. We want to help you in that faith journey. So message us, call the church. You can even type right on this, uh, this message during the service. I just dedicated my life to the Lord or rededicated my life. And we just want to walk with you in that journey and celebrate with you. So we want to take this opportunity to thank David and Tiffany. We so appreciate you guys coming and sharing your story. Yeah, thank you guys for having us. It's been an amazing blessing. You guys are awesome. We love you guys so much. And when we all get a chance to come together and we're allowed to hug each other, it might still take some time, even if it's an elbow at first or whatever. Love on the hands since they're an incredible family. And we just want to thank you for joining us. We always say this, you know, but we believe it. You know, God has not called us to just merely survive. But like our namesake as a church, God wants us to truly thrive in every area. So we love you. Thank you so much for joining us. God bless. 
would like to give you a challenge today to give how God gives. Jesus said, when you've done it unto the least of these, you have done it unto me. Here at Thrive Church, we created the grab and go lunches to meet an immediate need. The first day we started, we served 120 lunches. Up until today, we served 400 lunches a day. We are meeting needs in our community because of your generosity, your faithfulness to Thrive Church. At Thrive Academy, the school in Ethiopia, they are also quarantined, but we are meeting the needs there too. Andy, the principal, along with his staff and his student leaders are taking food to the kids and their families every day. God is with them. God is with you. If you're sitting at home and you don't have a job, and you're sitting at home wondering how your bills are gonna be paid. You're sitting at home wondering what is the new normal? And you're sitting at home wondering when are things gonna get back? When can I go out? Everybody's journey is a little bit different, but I want you to know that God is with you. I heard a phrase and it said, stop asking God to bless what you're doing. Get involved in what God is doing because it's already blessed. God is with you and he has a plan for you and he's going to see us through. Today, if you'd like to continue your generosity and your faithfulness in giving, there are several ways that you can do that. You can go to their website at wethrive.org, click on the donate button and follow the prompts and you can give there. We also have text to give, which you can text we thrive one word, all lowercase, to 77 nine seven seven a link will pop up and you can follow the prompts and give there you can also send your check in to thrive church or you can bring it by yourself and say hi we'd love to see you thank you so much for your generosity and your faithfulness so that thrive can keep thriving and meeting needs in our community thank you